Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Our listener support campaign continues. You can become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now we're going to bring you a series that I had not even heard of until this year, Squad Room. Squad Room was yet another mutual police procedural. It aired between 1953 and 1956. In the wake of Dragnet's success, uh, there were a whole lot of series that came out with the idea that they were going to portray police work accurately. And they would focus on a certain aspect of police work, like the lineup. The original marketing materials uh, that ended up in the newspapers that I found for 1953 emphasized the interrogation room. So that certainly is something we can expect to play a role in it. Today's episode comes after the series had been on the air for a little bit more than a year. The original air date is February 3rd, 1954, and I cannot actually find an episode title, so let's just go ahead and take a listen. Squad Room, Lieutenant John Douglas. We are what we're raised up to be. I believe that's the way that old saying goes. Now, this case certainly went a long way to prove it. The Uniform Division got a routine complaint at 12.01 a.m. to investigate what was supposed to be a routine H&W, husband and wife. It turned out to be this. You killed him? Come on, come on, blood all over your kitchen apron. This man, look up at me. Yeah. Jonas Parle. Is this man Jonas Parle, your husband? Yeah, I kill him. With meat knife, I kill him. This is your meat knife from your kitchen here? Well, is it? I turn our supper on stove. You get out of the way. What's your first name? Yeah, I kill the papa. I asked you your first name. What you want from me? Maria. What you want? Let him be buried, and I'll be punished. I hate it. Twenty-five years. You go now, huh? To prison. No. First, I think I wash. No, I no wash no more dishes. It's cold outside. I take. Court. We go. Goodbye, mister. Goodbye, papa. You're no good man. Drink all the time of booze. Mama, she works so hard. Mr. Policeman, I'm not sorry, no. Now you be ready? Come. Come, you punish me. He beat me. One time too much. I know, kid. He beat you? Is that why you pushed that knife into his stomach? Hmm. It could be me. The on the floor if he got hand on knife first. You fought? Fight? You two had a fight? Only to my son. Well, he come home, he find out. You come? Sergeant, uh, make the notifies. Post a man on guard. Uh, yes, Mrs. Parle. You're a cool one. I come. Your age? No more. Well, not some more. Look, uh, yes? What? What, Sergeant? That young man for me? Oh, for her. All right, send him over. No! Oh, no. No, you go home. Sit down. Papa's dead. All be quiet now. You better go from here. I just was home. What's your name? Jim. Where were you all evening? Out. 
I asked you a question. With friends. Yes, Mama, I was home. You saw... I got home right after they took you. You saw on the floor? I saw. Turn around to the desk here, please. I didn't kill my stepfather, Lieutenant. I know you're a lieutenant because the cop at our door told me it was Lieutenant Douglas took Mama. I'm not sorry, Jim. No. We fight. Again, huh? I took too much. Be there. He want big story. I tell truth. We fight. I get to meet knife first. Jim, Jim, you tell him what kind of people we are. I no got big story. I want a full and complete statement. I tell truth. It's not good enough. I kill him. Goodbye. Lock me up. That's all. Edie. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, book her. Murder one. Yes, sir. Come along. Now, wait a minute. Hands off, mister. Can I talk to my mother a minute? But make it a minute. Mom. Mom. T.S., get me the district attorney's office. Mom, what do I do with Mr. Parra? The body they're taking to the morgue. Well, as soon as he comes in, then. For arraignment in the morning, right. Mm -hmm. You can't have the body until the autopsy's complete. Then you bury him. Come, police lady, you take me. We go. I see you. Maybe they let me again, Jim. Sit down. You can't do anything to me. Do I look eager to? He wasn't my father. I just gathered that. To me, he was always Mr. Parle. He was no good. So she told me two or three times. Beat him. Did she tell you that, too? Used to beat me. Till I gave it to him one night. He realized I'd gotten too big. How old's your mother? Didn't she tell you? Age. Fifty-nine, she says. She employed? Twenty-five years she supported him. Where? Where? I asked you where. Cleaning woman, the Acme office cleaners and polishers. They handle... I know who they are. Catch me working, knocking my brains out twenty-five years. Your mother ever arrested? <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> my mother is the biggest sucker you ever met in your life. I'm not surprised over why she did it, but I never expected... I thought she'd work herself to death putting up with that loudmouth drunk. I'm surprised. I'm actually surprised. You are, eh? That she actually killed him. You can go. <clears throat> Better arrange for a lawyer for her. With what? The court, then. The court will appoint her one. Yeah, I hope. Her language. She always wanted to go to night school. How could she? Yeah, the language. She don't handle it too good. <laughs> Squad Room, the true-to-life enactment, continues in a moment. Let's take a moment to think of the world we live in, of just how small it really is. For example, a modern commercial transport flying from San Francisco would reach Honolulu in a matter of hours. So let's say that you're going to the Hawaiian Islands for the first time. Although there are many reefs and shoals included in the Hawaiian chain, which make it the longest group of islands in the world, you'll probably find that Hawaii is the largest island of all. Probably the most well-known of the group, however, is Oahu, because it's the most highly developed. Seventy percent of the territory's population live on this bit of land, 40 miles long by 26 miles wide. And it's here that famous Honolulu combines old Polynesian traditions with big city conveniences and facilities. Being in a territory of the United States naturally accounts for the Hawaiians following the American democratic way of life. However, they do have laws and quaint customs that are still their very own. Respect them, and you in turn will be respected as a fellow American citizen. Hawaiians are a hospitable people who want to be friends. But remember, the only way to have a friend is to be one. Squad Room. Edie, I'll uh, need you in a minute. Lieutenant Douglas, First Division Detectives. Who? Oh, yes, yes, we're ready for you, Mr. Prosecutor. The woman's name is Maria Parle, P-A-R-L. She admits. Yes, sir, she's ready to plead guilty. I booked her on a... Well, she claims a struggle, fight. This was her second husband, married uh, to him 25 years. Him? Well, she says an all-account leech, monkey on her back. Uh-huh. 
Him? Well, what she claims. Drunk 25 years. Want me, Lieutenant? It's 8 now. Have her over to you by 8.30. Right. Bye. So long. He's in for a surprise. On Mrs. Parle's attitude? Uh, bring her up from detention and get her over to the prosecutor's office. I killed him, she says, and she's waiting to be punished. Huh? You look pretty. Uh, I swing now. I think I'll sleep the whole 24 hours. Go ahead, sir. I'll hold it for you. Police one for us. Yes? Uh, Sergeant Allen will be right back. Uh, you drink the coffee he's bringing me. Uh, what's the matter? Hold, please. Missing persons. They had a complaint on a Mrs. Marjorie Filene, a housewife. 2400 West Elm disappeared on her way to a company party. Sergeant Flannery Communications, he wants to know if you have anything on it since it's our precinct. No. Why? Why query us on a routine missing? I'll tell you that I can't find you. You're left, sir. <laughs> right? You look real yeah. beef. All right. Thanks. Hold the fort. He's uh, not around, Sergeant. He's been on a 36 hour. I guess he left. Yes. What? And Forrester, don't forget the triplicate on Mrs. Parle. Uh, you better get started, Edie. Uh, get the Parle woman to the prosecutor. It's five after. Bye, everybody. Lieutenant, wait up. Uh, I have uh, um, just saw him, Sergeant. Hold on. Lieutenant, I'm sorry, but that wasn't routine. Well, what is it? On that missing. You know Flannery by the time he got around to us. A man in a car found someone lying in a ditch on Highway 1, mile from the state line, woman, young, bullet hole in her head. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. Well, I'm sorry, too. It happens all the time, doesn't it? Yes, sir. This is Douglas. Yes? Highway 1 near the line is our precinct, yes. I tell the coroner I'll meet him out there. It's this Mrs. Marjorie Filene, hmm? 2400 West Elm, yes. I got that. Housewife, hmm? Filene, you're sure? Forster, cover. Sign me out. I'm going uh, over on an extra tour. Come on, Edie, get that Mrs. Parle, that cleaning woman. Oh, uh, yes, Lieutenant. It's ten after now. Good Lord. Are you the husband? Yes, 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 I am. Sorry for your trouble, Mr. Filene. <laughs> Police car just, just came and brought me. We were to meet at a party office. Gay, you know. You identify this? <coughs> now, please, try. Oh, it's a shock I don't, I don't feel. Now, easy, please. I, I know, I know. Well, I was to meet her. She never got there. I came straight from work. At the party, no one had seen her. She, she's been lying here in that dirty ditch. Who knows how long? Well, that's one of the things I want your help on. Well, I was at my office all day. She was supposed to be home. Home till it was time to meet me at the party. It was a big party, company. My company, company party. I, I don't know how this will affect my chances now. Chances of what? Well, the fact she didn't show at the party and now all this bad publicity. I, uh, I feel better now. Do you know what time it is? Yes, yes, it's time for the train. I mean, around 8.30, isn't it? I didn't take my watch. I was in such a hurry. A.M.? Do you expect me to believe that you had no knowledge of where your wife was all this time? I mean, uh, no, I, I mean, of course. I, I, I didn't know she was lying here murdered in a ditch. Let's start over. Yes. You worked at your job yesterday. By the way, what do you do, Mr. Filey? Manager, the Westbrook Corporation. The entire facilities in the tri-state. That's why I'm so upset over her not being at the party last night. I'm up on the top team. Now, just a minute now. Of course, I'm terribly upset about what happened to Marjorie here. I, I... Sergeant, take this man downtown. I think you should be, mister. Face down, shot and killed. Your wife found her at 8 a.m., a bullet in her head. Oh, I did call several hospitals when she didn't come home at all last night. It sounds worse than it is. You see, we haven't gotten along well lately, and... I didn't want any divorce because of its possible effect with the company. All right, take your mitts off. I'm coming with you. Sergeant Allen. 
Allen's on sick, sir. Forrester's been holding down the room. Oh, I got years on him. I'm only on 44 hours without sleep now. We found her car. Mm. Abandoned down under the arch at the foot of Lower Mulberry. Uh, send me some coffee, Edie. How about a ham and egg and some butter strips? Just coffee. Make it two. Found this in her car. Purse. Party purse. Really stained, isn't it? You should have seen the blood. Inside. Inside the car, I mean. Mm. Also found a fifth of fine whiskey. And a thirty-two caliber rifle. Ballistics should call in a minute on the gun. Was she drunk? Hmm. It wasn't opened. Obviously taking it with her to the party. Neighbors have been calling the desk downstairs, Lieutenant. Nice woman, judging from the caliber of the people who called. Where is he? You mean you wish you could say the same for him? Well, he's a prime suspect. Have him brought up. Otherwise, why should I care a fig about it? <laughs> Sit down, Filene. Yes, sir. P.S., why can't I get a line out of... Well... How would I know you've got my plug pulled? If there's a call, put it in. I'll be with you in a minute, mister. I hope there's no wrong impression. Hello? Yes, I've been trying to reach you. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, I can't talk too freely now, but the slug does... I didn't kill my wife, Lieutenant. Even if... Slug mates uh, with a rifle. Maybe you think I, 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 I... Yes, definite signs of struggle where she was found... A fur coat thrown, clothes torn, the dirt in the ditch all churned up, the broken eyeglasses. All right, keep in touch. She had to, had to wear glasses while driving, Lieutenant. So I discovered from her driving license. I didn't kill Marjorie, Lieutenant. Mister, whether you cared or didn't care if your wife stayed out all night is your business. There's one thing in your favor. I didn't kill her. The pattern in this case is indicative of criminal behavior, not merely a husband and wife situation. However, who knows? You may have a criminal mind. Oh, now look here. It was hit and miss, hurried, animal-like in its fury, and careless. Careless in the disposal of evidence. It indicates to us a tremendous desire on the attacker's part to get away and get fast. So fast, the rifle was left behind. I'm still going to hold you. Do you have anything to add? Take him back down. I got it. Lieutenant Douglas. Yes? Lieutenant? Oh, you got the call. You traced to... Who? No, I can't believe it. You're positive. You're... All right, if that's the way it is, bring him in, Forrester. Yes, step on it. Back here to the squad room. Uh, Ballistics made a make on the cereal through the manufacture of the rifle. Traced to a hardware store. They'll be bringing him in. What's the dispose so far on Mrs. Parle? Too soon for the grand jury, isn't it? Women's detention downtown is crowded, sir. Those dance hall raids. So the DA asked us to quarter her here. She's downstairs, sir. All right. All right. When they arrive, tell Forrester I'm just sitting, waiting for him. Sit. Hands off, that's all. Jim. Hey, come, they throw me out of bed. Don't you guys respect the wreath on the door? Jim Parr. So now we've got two of you. You can't prove anything. We can. By means of the rifle you used and left behind. So? You killed the filing woman. I only wanted her money. Money? <laughs> no, at the traffic light about a mile up from where you found her. I, I, I stopped her from starting up when she turned green. I got in. I asked her for her money, and then I was just going to blow and get away. She started to fight me, and the rifle went off. No kidding. So I drove down the road away. I pulled her out, but she wasn't dead. She started fighting again. Then all of a sudden, she, she crumpled up, fell into the ditch. I left her there. I, I drove the car away fast. I ditched it, and then I, I, I went home. Her fur coat was pretty valuable. I was afraid. Afraid to take that. Or even to take her watch and rings. All I wanted was money. Why'd she have to fight me? I... I just wanted money. Money to pay my stepfather's funeral expenses. 
to get my mother a good lawyer. My mother was very close to me. Sit down. That's all her life amounts to. She's going to get the chair. I might as well get it, too. Squadroom, the true-to-life enactment. Today on duty desk is Lieutenant Douglas Win Wright. As Jim Parle, Lawson Zerby. As Mrs. Parle, Virginia Payne. Squadroom is produced and directed by Win Wright. Written by Peter Irving. All names are fictitious. Any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Bill Maher speaking. We pause now for station identification. Welcome back. Well, Lieutenant Douglas should have known the husband didn't do it because if having his wife show up late or not show up at the party would harm his reputation, think about what being convicted of killing her would do. The actual resolution to that case does seem a bit much, but I think it's kind of in, in keeping with the occasional soporotic or over-the-top nature of New York radio. Now, this uh, series is interesting in that the lead character is played by the producer-director, uh, which I think outside of Dragnet is not really something that I've uh, seen when it comes to uh, old-time radio uh, detective shows. Uh, this was not actually the, always the case. Uh, in fact, uh, when the series began, uh, William Zuckert and Chuck Webster uh, were the stars. William Zuckert, uh, we hear, you know, in various character roles and as the lieutenant on crime and Peter Chambers, and then he also uh, took over, you know, the lead role on uh, Police Blotter. But by February 1954, when Wright had, I do wonder if that was a cost-saving measure in the same way that William Johnstone taking on nearly all the creative duties on Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar at one point helped to save the show money. Ben Wright is not particularly well-known. In fact, just searching the normal internet, I could barely find any information on him. I had to go to newspaper.com uh, and pull up a f couple of uh, news articles. But what we do have online is someone better known for works uh, behind the scenes as producer and director. In fact, he got promoted to head of production at NBC in 1946. And here I quote from Calus Clarissa Start writing in the St. Louis uh, Dispatch. And uh, she says, no mere theorist about acting standards, right? A tall, grain-haired uh, man whose features resemble uh, those of actor Raymond Massey spent 15 years in the theater, and his voice and mannerisms reflect the training. Like many radio producers, he has, as he expresses it, been through the mill of theatrical training, from usher to mob super to bit player to actor to director, with time out during World War I for a hitch in the Navy. In similar fashion, in his 16 years of radio work, he advanced from drama director for WWJ in Detroit to his present position, that of a top-flight executive well-trained in that complicated business of entertaining a fickle public. And uh, Miss Stark featured an example of uh, Wright's perfectionist uh, uh, tendencies when he was producing a uh, radio play called The Murder of uh, Lattice. And the way he started uh, was he got out the front page of Who's Who in Theater and uh, 
went through the entire volume, read through everybody to make sure that he had um, that he had picked out the best possible uh, cast, left no stone unturned. And, you know, he was very involved in the music. And he was dedicated to accuracy. I, I guess this made him a good fit for the police procedural. He was dedicated to accuracy to such a degree that there was a very small part that called for a shit, a, a shit a boy. And so he... Uh, actually went out and hired someone who had just recently come to the country. Uh, and uh, he actually, this was the only thing he got complaints about on the production, uh, and says, uh, one of our directors wired us, excellent job. The only thing that annoyed me was the Brooklyn accent of that boy. Uh, and so that's, I guess, is an illustration you can't please everyone. Wright could certainly act, and and in his later years of what his obituary described as semi-retirement, uh, he returned to doing some acting. He uh, appeared in several episodes of the TV show The Defenders, and also uh, did some work on Broadway. I think he does well here. There's a certain grumpiness about uh, Lieutenant Douglas. I do wonder how well he'd perform on a full... Uh, a good night's sleep. So you do wonder if he'll ever get it. So I hope you enjoyed it. We have one more program left, and so be sure and tune into that next week. Well, now I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Eileen, Patreon supporter since April, currently supporting us at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Well, that will actually uh, do it for today. If you are uh, listening to this on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and choose the notification bell. And join us back here tomorrow. We will have a very special final listener support special and also public domain uh, video theater. And then we'll be back on Monday with Casey Crime Photographer. Thursday, we'll be presenting Billy Swift, Boy Bet Detective. And then we'll be back next Saturday with another episode of Squad Room. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our followers on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.